Egypt. Synonymous with mighty pharaohs, golden treasures and iconic pyramids captivates our imaginations. But within the grand tapestry of its history lies a fascinating yet overlooked chapter, the reign of the Nubian pharaohs. From the ancient kingdom of Kush, located in Sudan, rose a dynasty destined to rule over the vast Egyptian empire. These were the rulers of the 25th dynasty, influential figures whose origins and legacy remain shrouded in an irresistible aura of mystery. As conquerors, the Nubian pharaohs extended their dominion over Egypt, creating the largest empire the region had seen since the New Kingdom. Their bold ambitions even led them to clash with the mighty Assyrian Empire, forever altering the political landscape of the Near East. Yet despite their undeniable power, their names were nearly erased from historical records as the Assyrians surged forth, conquering the 25th dynasty and casting its pharaohs into the shadows. Why did their reign fall into relative obscurity? Were they deliberately deleted by those who followed? Or did the sands of time simply obscure their remarkable achievements? In the heart of ancient Nubia, a kingdom thrived along the fertile banks of the Nile. This was Kush, a realm with its distinctive culture and traditions. The city of Napata, its spiritual core, hummed with the whispers of a grand dynasty. From this cradle of ambition, Pai, a formidable Kushite ruler, would make his move, his eyes fixed on the grand prize, the throne of Egypt itself. The conquest was meticulously planned, with generations of Kushite leaders paving the way for Pai's decisive campaign. Egypt, its former unity shattered, was ripe for a new conqueror, and Pai, a devout believer in the god Amun, was determined to be that chosen savior. With the precision of a striking cobra, he led his armies north, seizing control of Thebes and proclaiming himself Pharaoh of Upper and Lower Egypt. His triumph, etched upon the imposing steel of victory, is a testament to his might and unshakable faith in his divine right to rule. The reign of Pai ushered in an era of unexpected renaissance in Egypt. This Nubian pharaoh, far from being a foreign conqueror, proved a fervent admirer of Egyptian traditions. Under his watchful eye, neglected temples were restored to their former glory. His revitalization of pyramid construction was most striking, a glorious echo of Egypt's golden age. At El Kuru, his pyramid stands as a stark reminder of his desire to be forever linked with the legacy of the pharaohs. But Pai's ambitions extended beyond the Nile Valley. He dared to challenge the rising hegemony of the Assyrians in the Near East. Though ultimately unsuccessful in his bid to sway the region, his bold move sent ripples through the ancient world, hinting at the far-reaching power of the Nubian pharaohs. The reign of Pai set the stage for an intriguing succession of rulers hailing from the Nubian heartland. Shibitku, his successor, is shrouded in a fascinating historical puzzle. Records suggest his reign might have preceded the illustrious Shabaka, a reversal of the long-held order of events. Following the chronological shift, Shabitku ruled around 712 BC with an iron fist, unifying Upper and Lower Egypt under Kushite control. He ruthlessly suppressed the Sate dynasty to consolidate his authority, ensuring his dominance over the Nile Valley. With the seat of power firmly established in Memphis, Egypt embarked on an era marked by duality. Nubian heritage intertwined with an unwavering reverence for Egyptian traditions. Shabaka ascended to the throne and brought a scholarly and diplomatic approach to leadership. His reign, marked by an ambitious restoration of ancient temples and monuments, is a testament to his deep admiration for Egypt's heritage. However, Egypt, under his rule, was no longer an isolated kingdom. The ever-expanding power of Assyria cast a long shadow, foreshadowing an inevitable clash of civilizations. The mighty Taharqa, the greatest builder of the 25th dynasty, rose to prominence in 690 BC. His reign echoes Egypt's glorious past, brimming with prosperity and ambitious architectural projects. Taharqa, deeply religious, lavished immeasurable wealth and attention on the Temple of Amun at Kawa. Throughout the Nile Valley, from the towering structures of Karnak to his immense pyramid at Nuri, he left an indelible mark on the landscape of Egypt. But peace was never a permanent state in the ancient world. The Assyrian Empire's gaze fixed on the fertile Nile Valley ignited a conflict destined to reshape the Near East. Taharqa, ever the warrior, bravely led his armies against the Mesopotamian behemoth. 
while early successes hinted at the potential for victory, as when he rallied to the aid of King Hezekiah of Judah in 701 BC, ultimately fate was not on his side. In 671 BC, the relentless Assyrian war machine, led by King Esarhaddon, surged into Egypt, conquering Memphis and forcing Taharqa to retreat southwards. However, Egyptian rule was not extinguished entirely. Taharqa, undeterred, took Memphis and re-established alliances, defying Assyrian dominance. The final devastating blow came with the arrival of Ashurbanipal. Despite their best efforts, Taharqa's forces were routed, and Thebes, the symbolic heart of Egyptian power, fell to the Assyrians. In a poignant act of defiance, Taharqa retreated to his Nubian homeland, where he would spend his final days. The reign of the Nubian pharaohs in Egypt drew closed, yet their story is far from over. Their legacy lingers in their awe-inspiring pyramids and the complex political landscape they helped to shape. With Taharqa's passing, a new figure emerged from the shadows of Napata, Tantamani, the last of the Nubian pharaohs. Determined to reclaim the legacy of his ancestors, he embarked on a bold campaign to wrest control of Egypt from the clutches of the Assyrians. Sailing north with a mighty army, he was embraced in Thebes, his coronation echoing the ancient rituals of Egyptian kingship. Tantamani's reign was a whirlwind of defiance. He sought to restore order to a fractured Egypt, revitalizing the neglected temples and cults. In a calculated move against Assyrian dominance, he defeated their vassal, Necho I, at Memphis. Yet this victory was bittersweet. Some local rulers submitted, while others stubbornly clung to their fortresses, the unity of Egypt remaining an elusive dream. Undeterred, Tantamani pressed northward, laying siege to Delta cities. However, fate had a cruel twist in store. Necho's son, Samtik I, conspired with the Assyrians and returned at the helm of a formidable army bolstered by Carian mercenaries. The tide of the war turned with brutal swiftness. Tantamani was forced to retreat to Thebes, the once mighty city, now a desperate refuge. The relentless Assyrians pursued their sacking of Thebes, a devastating blow to the heart of Egyptian powers. In 663 BC, Tantamani's grand ambitions lay in ruins. Exiled to his Nubian homeland, he would never again pose a threat to the empires vying for control of Egypt. Samtik I, installed as a vassal ruler, moved strategically to unify the fractured land, ushering in the 26th dynasty. The curtain was falling on the age of the Nubian pharaohs, yet their legacy was far from extinguished. Upon his death, Tantamani was interred at El Karu, the royal burial ground near the Kushite capital of Napata. His pyramid stands as a silent testament to the once unifying power of the Nubian rulers, and while they relinquished direct control of Egypt, their influence ran deep. Driven south to Moreau, the Kingdom of Kush would endure, a beacon of their unique culture and resilience. They continued to claim the title of Pharaoh, an empty gesture perhaps, but a powerful reminder of their indomitable spirit. The Nubian pharaohs, once powerful figures on the stage of the ancient world, were relegated to the shadows. Assyrian conquest and sate resurgence had effectively erased them from the forefront of Egyptian history. Despite their relatively brief reign, the influence of the Nubian pharaohs on Egyptian art and culture is undeniable. It was a period of revitalization, a deliberate echo of Egypt's former grandeur. Their reign saw the return of a long-lost tradition, the construction of the pyramids. While the immense pyramids of Giza belong to a distant past, the Nubian pharaohs built their own, smaller yet equally imposing monuments. At El Karu and Nuri, their pyramids rose as stark and proud reminders of both their Kushite origins and their respect for Egyptian traditions. Pai, the founder of the 25th dynasty, commissioned the first of these pyramids. Its stark geometric form mirrored the style once popular during the New Kingdom, a deliberate homage to Egypt's golden age. Remarkably, more Nubian pyramids survive today than their Egyptian counterparts, silent testaments to an enduring legacy. A reverence marked the reign of the Nubian pharaohs for ancient traditions. Taharqa, the most prolific builder of the dynasty, adorned the temples of Karnak with grand colonnades and kiosks. The Temple of Amun at Jebel Barkal, a testament to the deep spirituality of the Nubian pharaohs, was expanded and embellished throughout their rule. 
However, even as they embraced Egyptian artistic traditions, they infused them with distinct Kushite elements. Images of Taharqa portray him with features characteristic of his Nubian heritage, a subtle yet powerful assertion of his unique identity. This exquisite blend of Egyptian and Kushite styles serves as a tangible reminder of the complex interplay between these two ancient cultures. The decline of the 25th dynasty was spurred by Assyrian conquests and the rise of Sate rulers, most notably Samtik I. In a vengeful act, Samtik II attempted to erase the Nubian pharaohs from historical memory, desecrating their monuments and chiseling out their names. An entire dynasty was seemingly reduced to dust. And yet, the Nubian legacy could not be extinguished so easily. Upon their retreat to Nubia, they carried with them the torch of their unique culture. Establishing their capital at Mero, they continued flourishing, their artistic traditions evolving and blending with new influences. The Kingdom of Kush would endure long after the last Nubian pharaoh relinquished control of Egypt. The saga of the Nubian pharaohs compels us to re-examine what we think we know about the ancient world. Their story, etched in stone and desert sands, speaks of conquest and resilience, cultural blending, and the fight to preserve a unique heritage. Did their fall from political power erase their mark on history? That is a question only the sands of time may answer as future discoveries continue to illuminate the legacy of the 25th dynasty. If you found this journey through ancient Egypt and Nubia captivating, please give this video a like and share it with fellow history enthusiasts. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an exploration of history's forgotten corners. And remember, the past holds countless secrets, let's uncover them together.